butterfly in the sky. Citizens of Gotham, I have come to tell you of that night seven years ago, as written down by one of your own, Theodore Geisel. I hear he fancies himself a doctor, but I found no such degree. Now the star belly sneeches at bellies with stars. The plain belly sneeches at none upon thars. Those stars weren't so big, they were really quite small. You might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. This seems to me a problem easily solved with laser therapy. But because they had stars, all the star belly sneeches would brag we're the best kind of sneeches on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they'd sniff and they'd snort. Well, they have nothing to do with this plain belly sort. And whenever they met when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past without even talking. This type of mindset is a symptom of the disease. They sit around and attack us without even a word. We must remember, never seek to appease. I know. Let's hit them in the head with a board. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in on the game? Not at all. You only could play if your bellies had stars, and the plain belly children had none upon thars. This makes no sense to me. I've got horrible scars on my back, but you don't see me getting into Spargo based on that. And the Starbelly Sneetches had Frankfurter roasts, or picnics, or parties, or marshmallow toasts. They never invited the Plain Belly Sneetches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near. And that's how they treated them year after year. Hmm, this gives me an idea. Starless Sneetches, it's true that your powers of perception are as wet as a warthog's backside. Then one day, it seems, while the plain belly Sneetches were moping and doping alone on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. I disagree that car's not that strange. At least it's a car, not some half-converted tank. My friends, he announced, in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean. And I've heard of your troubles, I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that, I'm the fix-it-up chappy. I've come here to help you, I have what you need, and my prices are low and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Ah, I see your game, Mr. McMonkey McBean. But that makes you and I enemies, for you see, I have plans for the Sneetches. They are my instrument for the destruction of Gotham. Then quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like a star belly Sneetch? My friends, you can have them at three dollars each. Behold, Sneetches, the instrument of your liberation and my remuneration. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside, then the big machine roared, and it clonked and it bonked and it jerked and it burked, and it bobbed them about, but the thing really worked. When the plain belly Sneetches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon thars. I can see right away that this shall not work. There's no destruction, no killing. What kind of uprising is this? We will never bring Gotham down in this way. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties. And now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best Sneetches, and they are the worst. But now, how in the world will we know, they all frowned. If which kind is what, or the other way round? Then up came McBean with a very sly wink, and he said, Things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who, this is perfectly true. But come with me, friends. Do you know what I'll do? 
I'll make you again the best sneeches on the beaches. And all it will cost you is ten dollars eaches. Belly stars are no longer in style. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars, so you won't look like sneeches who have them on thars. And that handy machine working very precisely removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then with snoots in the air they paraded about, and they opened their beaks and they let out a shout. We know who is who, now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. And thus the star belly sneech became the tramp stamp. Then of course those with stars all got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then of course old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star off machine. Then of course from then on, as you probably guess, things got really got into a horrible mess. All the rest of the day on those wild screaming beaches, the fix-it-up chappy kept fixing up sneeches. Off again, on again, in again, out again. Through the machines they'd race round and about again, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money, they kept running through, until neither the plane nor the star belly knew whether this one was that one, or that one was this one, or which one was what one, or what one was who. And that is how the entire Sneetches population developed Hepatitis C. Then when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up, and he went. And he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They will never learn. No, you can't teach a Sneetch. But McBean was quite wrong, I am happy to say, that the Sneetches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that Sneetches are Sneetches, and no kind of Sneetch is the best on the beaches. That day, all the Sneetches forgot about stars, and whether they had one or not upon thars. This story is not ending at all as expected. Mr. Sylvester McMonkey McMean, you now have my permission to die. This has been the first of what may be the first of many Grandpa Bay narrates. But for now, I will leave you with this. I do not often break heroes, but when I do, I break Batman. Stay affably evil. My friends. And you look like a victim of a surgical crime. A little Darth Vader, a little Optimus Prime. You used to be okay, and I liked you that way. But I don't think that I like you better. No, I don't think that I like you better. Mr. McMonkey McBean! That is my banana.